this is where we started from okay photoshop just did an amazing job at knowing that the curve is ending the pool and it added its own floor oh my god <laughs> Hey guys and welcome back to the channel my name is Joseph. Today's video is going to be really quick I know I'm letting you guys stare at an overexposed image but I have a reason for that and we'll jump into that really soon. This is a couple of images I captured with Napari that behind the scenes is going to come really really soon but I just wanted to I was looking at these images and looking at some of the things that I was playing with in post processing that I decided to make a video about so I know that in the beginning you know when we were shooting with not me essentially but when people were shooting with film and then came the world of digital film photographers were always saying that those who were shooting with digital were not real photographers and that they felt that they were not really hands-on and so it wasn't making them real photographers and I do understand that sentiment I didn't grow up in that time but I know that with film photography you had to be hands-on you had to be really present and you had to be really conscious of what you wanted to capture or unless of course maybe you were going for a stylistic approach where you wanted to blow out certain parts of the image and you have to set your film and your settings in such a way that you are capturing what you have in mind exactly you can't waste film every film counts and with digital photographers it was rather the opposite they could shoot as many images as they wanted and then always come and you know save some of them in raw processing again the reason why i'm doing this video is because over the years so many of us are now shooting with digital cameras and now we're in a world of mirrorless cameras where we can even expose you know right on the screen if you're shooting with natural light and make sure that you're nailing it also focus is not something that you have to struggle with you're not you know you don't have to focus and then recompose and that is also another debate between people who are shooting with digital SLRs and then people who are shooting with mirrorless cameras saying that people who are shooting with mirrorless cameras are in real photographers because it's really relatively easy you know and all of that but what I want to say out of all of this is that all these technological advancements have just come to enhance our work and I'm saying this because of all that is happening in the world of AI and, and how far AI is going or you know if they can find a way to embrace it right so this image is overexposed yes I know but with this raw processing software I can quickly and easily save it and it has become like a norm people can shoot overexposed images because right now their cameras are able to capture more dynamic range and retain it in the raw data and the processing softwares also are able to reach into that file and then bring all of the information back and it has become so basic you shoot an overexposed image is as easy as coming back into a software like capture one or lightroom and then just dragging your exposure down and then you have a good looking image and then you can simply just add contrast maybe boost in your saturation you know you can tweak some colors you know maybe the greens if you want to make some adjustments you can easily do that and it has become a part of our everyday life that we don't appreciate the effort that went into creating the ability and making this progress accessible to a lot of us right this is another image that i also just want us to look at briefly right okay so i showed this image in portrait mode but let's just say i'm done editing it and looking at this image i feel like to enjoy the vastness or even where she is the location and everything it would have been really really interesting if i had shot this image in landscape now here's what i'm going to do first of all my softbox is showing here just a little bit so i will go back for the remove tool and i will just paint over that and then hit the check mark and it should do a decent job of removing the softbox from there with just one stroke we've been able to get rid of that now if i hit my crop tool and i decide to expand the canvas maybe something like so even just add a little bit to over here actually let me just recrop this so she's in more like the lower third of the image so something like this right i can now change this into generative expand and i'm just gonna hit generate and allow photoshop to do its thing and figure out how to fill this entire canvas and create a brand new background for me and if i wanted to do this myself this would have been a long process where i probably have to do a lot of sampling or comb the internet for images that would probably align with what i'm working on and see if i'm able to tweak and adjust and then make it fit that would have been hours and hours if not days of work but now the only limit is my internet speed this is a very very 
very beautiful image. I actually was envisioning something like this when I went to the location to capture this image. And this is beautiful. The reflections in the pool, it just got everything right. The light coming in from the back, it matched the sky, the depth of field in the back, it did that. And mind you, this is where we started from, okay? Photoshop just did an amazing job at knowing that the curve is ending the pool and it added its own floor. Oh my God, this is amazing. The mountains in the background, this is exactly what I was envisioning when I was capturing this image. It completed the tree for me, guys. This is a before, this is an after, and it blends in so, so well. But not only are you limited to just one generation, right? I can click over here and then let's just see what it does again so this is another variation you can see the difference over here and this is still a beautiful beautiful rendition we do have a few defects in there but again looking at where we started from and where we are those are going to be very easy and quick fixes this is also going to be our third option i'm clicking on that for that to load but obviously i feel like the very first rendition that i was given was pretty pretty amazing I really do love it. I love the way it looks. Everything is just on point. If I didn't create this with AI, if AI didn't exist, I wouldn't have been able to create this easily. And you know, it's just, I'm using it as a tool to enhance my work. So let me just open the floor and ask you guys your concerns, your thoughts about AI, generative film, mid journey, or everything happening concerning photography and AI. I'm really interested. I have so many videos coming coming up, I'm going to be using it, testing it, putting it in different scenarios to see how it performs and all of that. So stay tuned for that if you haven't subscribed. Um, if you enjoyed this video, got some value out of it, let me know in the comment section as well. Check out my digital store. I have amazing, amazing products in there that are going to help you with your retouching, speed up your retouching workflow. And I also, also guys, I also just launched my gift card so if you have a friend that you want to get something for photography related if the person is a photographer and you don't know what to get them from my store just get them a gift card and then ask them to come onto my website and then get whatever it is that they need they can spend up to the value of the card that you get them so that's been it for today's video let's continue with this conversation in the comments and i'll catch you in there and I'll, i will be responding i'm hoping that we are able to you know have an interactive session in the comments and um yeah i'll catch you guys in the next video and remember don't ever give up.